When someone has an addiction, what's going on is the release of the neurotransmitter dopamine. When dopamine is released from the brain, it gives you a euphoric feeling of pleasure. It gives you a high. And the amazing thing is, God created our minds to receive pleasure, to receive the release of dopamine for a reason. You see, a lot of positive things release dopamine and give us a high as well. Working hard, relations with your spouse, the feeling of achieving goals, the presence of God, these are all things that release dopamine as well and give you a natural high. But the problem with addiction comes in when unnatural foreign things hijack our brain's normal dopamine releasing process. With addiction to the wrong thing, there is so much dopamine that is released that the brain's receptors are not able to function in the right way, which creates an imbalance. And what happens is the brain's chemistry is thrown off because there's an overproduction of dopamine. And when one is addicted to things that overproduce dopamine, things such as porn, alcohol, certain foods, drugs, overindulgence in video games, when you have an overproduction of dopamine, it does two harmful things. It creates a chemical imbalance that reduces your ability to enjoy natural pleasures. Number two, it robs you from feeling truly satisfied. You see, when someone is addicted to something that overproduces dopamine, they will never be satisfied. They will always have an urge to find more and more forms of satisfaction to recreate that feeling. The natural things that are supposed to leave them satisfied through normal dopamine release, well, they just won't satisfy. So the person who is addicted to harmful things will have to keep trying to replicate that high, which ultimately leaves them feeling empty, depressed. So how do you know if you are addicted to something harmful? You know that you are indulging in something that's harmful and overproducing dopamine if you find yourself in a battle of novelty. The battle of novelty is this. It's when you have been doing something that gives you a high, but eventually it gets so boring that you have to do more extreme forms of it to get that good feeling. And then you have to keep increasing and increasing that activity until it produces death in you. This is what James was alluding to when he said this. In the first chapter 14, he said, But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And then sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. See, James spoke about how you first have desire and then in acting on it, it leads to sin. And then sin develops, it grows, which eventually leads to death. Really what he's describing is the battle of novelty. For example, someone who is addicted to cocaine, at first they're fine with just a little bit, just a little hit, but their dopamine release is so thrown off from that overproduction that they find themselves having to keep increasing the amount of drugs to get that novel feeling again until eventually they keep increasing it to get that novelty feeling and eventually it leads to death sin fully grown they overdose the same thing can be said for many who are addicted to porn at first a pornography addict they're fine just looking at a picture in a magazine but eventually a picture in a magazine that just won't cut it they then find the need to find more and more hardcore images and then those images lead to them needing to listen to and watch videos to bring about that euphoric feeling eventually even the videos develop to become more disturbing so that they can get that high this is how many people get into various forms of devious and, and sadistic forms of pornography and all just to give them that novel feeling. And eventually, sitting behind a computer won't cut it. And many men and women can tell you that the only way they were able to satisfy themselves at that point was to go out 
visit strip clubs and meet with prostitutes, which can easily lead to death. Death from disease, violence, death, just as James was talking about. You see, when sin is fully conceived, it leads to death. And that's what happens when you indulge in things that overproduce dopamine. You're never satisfied and you find yourself having to do more of it and more of it and more of it to get that high and more of it to get that high until you find yourself depleted and on the road to death. In the meantime, while you're chasing that high, the things that should naturally bring you pleasure don't. And that's why you would find yourself depressed. So what must we do? Anyone who is in any form of addiction, what must we do? Cut it off. Cut it off in the moment. Rewire the mind so that you can enjoy the natural release of dopamine and not the overproduction of dopamine, which leads to an addictive imbalance. Then you have to create new habits that release dopamine in a way that it is supposed to be released to give you a natural high, which will bring about true joy and peace. Again, God designed the brain to release dopamine in your body to give you a feeling of pleasure or a high, a sense of euphoria when you engage in certain things. And there are some natural forms of pleasure created by God that give you a natural high. The success of work and self-improvement, building new things, achieving goals, the relations with your spouse, the feeling that you get after working out. When you go for a walk and you do the body good, or when you lift weights, or when you do a cardiovascular exercise that burns calories, you know, these are things that you definitely feel pain in during the moment, but nothing beats the amazing euphoric feeling that you have after you work out. And this is a big one, another natural form of pleasure. Oh, you better believe it. God designed for us to have a dopamine release in our brain to give us a sense of euphoria, a high, if you will, whenever we're studying his word, having prayer and seeking him through worship. Whenever we're seeking God, whenever we're receiving revelation, whenever we are really ingesting the word of God, the presence of God into our life, you're supposed to get a high off of that. I hope you don't get offended by me saying hi, but you're supposed to seriously get really elevated. You're supposed to really feel great. And these are natural things that are supposed to make our life so enjoyable that you literally feel like you are in heaven while you are on earth. But you cannot appreciate the natural high that these things bring if your brain chemistry is contaminated through things that conflict with the natural dopamine release. You see, when your dopamine releases are all fighting against each other because of addiction or things that are unnatural, you will not find pleasure the way you should in natural beneficial things. I'll give you some examples. Overindulgence in entertainment and laziness. That brings about a dopamine release. It makes you feel good when you indulge in the entertainment, especially a lot of it. And when you lay around doing nothing all day, it actually does. But guess what? That's negative. And when you overindulge yourself in entertainment, especially stuff that's not natural, then you are literally allowing your mind to conflict against what is natural, such as the dopamine release that you would get if you're working hard, developing yourself, building new things, being creative. And so if you find yourself overindulging entertainment, what you will find is you're actually going to have a hard time working hard and being creative and achieving goals because there's a mental conflict taking place. So in order to be more successful at work, to achieve goals, be more creative, then you have to cut back on this right here and you will find that you will enjoy the pleasure that you receive from this even more. You see, when the entertainment addict has trained their mind to get their high from their entertainment source, they will likely just not become as enthusiastic in regards to work and creativity because the natural things just won't give them that novel sense of high. Here's something else that is a negative overproduction of dopamine which contaminates what's natural. Indulgence in pornography, masturbation, etc visitation of prostitutes, all that kind of stuff that's obviously sinful. 
When you indulge in that stuff, what you're doing is training your mind to overproduce dopamine to give you a euphoric feeling to something that really is not even real, is artificial, and it contaminates your relations with your spouse. I cannot tell you how many couples I've spoken with, how many people I've spoken with, how much research is out there that talks about how so many people have had marriages ruined because of pornography, masturbation, and things that are just not what God created. Again, overindulgence in entertainment, video games, etc. These are things that overproduce dopamine and contaminate your ability to truly appreciate the effects that you would get after a good workout. This is why a lot of times you will notice that if you've been overindulging in certain forms of entertainments, video games, whatever, things that just give you a really big high, you will find that your workout life has been slacking. Why? Because you've been getting your high from something else. So who needs to go to the gym and get that high? You see, there's a war going on mentally, and what you have to do is decide which front will you fight on. I say fight on this front because it's going to actually do something for you. You see, nothing is wrong with entertainment. I think video games are fun. I think watching TV is okay. But guess what? When entertainment begins to interfere with your ability to be productive, that entertainment has become containment because it's containing you to the present and preventing you from advancing into your future. And again, what can conflict with the high that you get from the study and worship of God? You already know. Getting a high, spending more time getting this high from sources contrary to God's word, such as idols. What can be idols? It doesn't have to be a statue. It can be money. Money can be an idol. A person can be an idol. A job can be an idol. When you find that you are getting more elevated mentally from things other than God, you're literally worshiping things and objects and people. You will find that your worship, your prayer life, your study of God's work, that will lack because your heart is between masters. And amazingly, Jesus alluded to this in Matthew 6, 24, when he said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So where is your heart? Is your heart going to be with an idol or with God? I think we all know where it should be. Allow your joy, allow your dopamine release, allow your euphoria to come from the study of God's word. And you will see that more and more you will find joy in what's natural. And there is no greater freedom than when you find pleasure in the thing that no one can take away from you. Money can be taken. People can be taken, but your faith in God can never be shaken. Find joy 